Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with coverage of round 7 of the 2018 Tata Steel Tournament. I'll show you the results and the standings later with a cross table. One viewer asked me for a cross table, so I have that at the end. But first, let's look at one of the games from round 7. Let's look at the leader. The Azerbaijani Grandmaster Shahriyar Mamajarov was white in the 7th round against Wei Yi from China, the Chinese sensation, 18 years old. It was played on the 20th of January. D4 from Mamajarov, Knight F6 from Wei Yi. Knight F3, D5, C4, E6, G3, Bishop E7, and Bishop G2. We are in a Catalan. Wei Yi castled. Wei Yi also was on the black side of a Catalan against Magnus Carlsen earlier in his tournament. And he got a comfortable draw in that game. And that's quite an achievement against Carlsen. Mamajarov castled. D takes C4 and Queen C2. Mamajarov said in his interview afterwards that this opening choice might have come as a surprise to Wei Yi, as Mamajarov has played this line only once or twice in his entire career. White wants to win back the C4 pawn. It's not good to try and keep that pawn with a move like B5 because you're opening up the Catalan bishop and that is bad news for black. A6 was played by Wei Yi, and you can take back on C4 straight away, but Mamajarov decided to play A4 first. Bishop D7, Queen takes, and Bishop C6. This is one way to try and neutralize the Catalan bishop. Bishop G5 from Mamajarov, and here the popular move is bishop d5, kicking the queen back, queen d3 and then c5. That's a possible way to play for black. But Wei Yi decided to play in a different way. He played h6, Mamajarov took on f6, bishop takes and knight c3 developing. Here Grandmasters Van Kampen and Hansen in the studio gave a possible way to play for black, which was a5, and then for example e3, and then you can take on f3, that's a way to play for black, bishop takes, and c6 to cement this diagonal, followed by knight a6 to b4. It's a possible setup for black, but instead of a5, where he decided to take on f3 straight away. Bishop takes, and now the knight is gone from f3, so the pawn on d4 is attacked twice, and where he took it. Here a possible variation is to swap the queens. Queen takes d4, bishop takes, and then you can take on b7. Rook a7 only move. Bishop back to f3. It's good to go to f3, give the king a square on g2, just in case. And then, for example, bishop takes c3, b takes, and knight d7. White is slightly better, but this is a possible way to play for black, as was pointed out in a live broadcast. Mamjarov did not want to swap the queens he took on c7. And now an active attempt to equalize is queen b4, as was pointed out again in the live broadcast of the tournament. And then there's different variations. It's not good to take on b7 with the bishop, because then rook a7, and this is a pin that will win the game for black. So after queen b4, you can play queen takes b7, queen takes, bishop takes, rook a7, bishop back, knight d7, and for example rook fc1, rook b8, attacking the b2 pawn, you can play knight d1, bishop takes, knight takes, rook takes, and we have an equal position. So all this after queen c7 and then queen b4. But Wei Yi decided on a different move. He played knight c6 instead. Queen takes b7, that's a pawn for white. White has won a pawn. It must have been preparation by Wei Yi, sacrificing a pawn. 
as a way to equalize. Mamed Yarov in his interview afterwards said he gave me a pawn and Black has to play very, very accurately to get a draw. But he felt that with accurate play this position should be holdable for Black and the engine agrees. Knight a5 was played by Wei Yi. That knight was described by Grandmaster von Kampen as pretty awesome there. And it's not so good to give the queen for two rooks. Queen takes a8 as possible. Rook takes. Bishop takes. But then queen b4 is a good move. Rook a b1. Knight c4 putting pressure on b2. Rook fd1 is the best move. Then you can take on b2. And white's knight is hanging on c3, so knight e4, and then queen takes a4, and again we have an equal position here. So Mamadjarov did not want to take on a8, did not want to give his queen for two rooks. He played queen c7, and that looks a very good move. It's attacking two of black's pieces, it's attacking the rook in the corner, and it's attacking the knight. But Black has two options to get out of this, either bishop d8 or queen d8. Queen d8 was played by Wei Yi and Mamadjarov thought bishop d8 was probably the best move. He calls it an interesting line and then he said e3 and it must be equal. In the live broadcast they also looked at bishop d8 attacking the queen. Queen f4 was looked at, queen takes g takes, rook b8 saving the rook, rook a b1 and knight c4 and the position is about equal. Black has enough compensation for the pawn. But as said, queen d8 was played by Wei Yi and if you take the queen, rook a takes d8 and grandmasters von Kampen and Hansen pointed out that black can play rook d2 or maybe the rook back to d8 and play knight c4. He has a beautiful bishop on f6 and they said it looks like white won't be able to hold on to his extra pawn and this game will fizzle, fizzle out to a draw. But Mamadjarov did not swap the queens. He wanted to keep the queens on the board to keep the game more complicated. He played the queen back to f4. Rook b8 was played. Rook fd1 attacking the queen. Queen e7 and rook a b1 protecting b2 and here black has a lot of counterplay as we saw in the different variations that we looked at but the queens are on the board and that makes things more complex here rook b4 was the best option for Wei Yi and here's a variation attacking the queen knight e4 is a move and then bishop d4 is the best option according to the engine not an easy move to find it's better than Taking on b2 because of queen d6, queen takes, rook takes, and black will lose the a pawn. But after rook a b1, Wei Yi did not play rook b4, he made a bad move here. He played rook f c8, and Mamadjarov afterwards called this a very bad move. And the engine agrees, white gets the advantage now. He played the strongest move, knight e4, and if you now take on b2, then there is knight d6, attacking the rook. Mamadjarov gave the move rook d8, but then he said after knight takes f7, queen takes f7, rook takes d8 check, rook takes d8, rook takes b2, White has an extra pawn and this is a very good position for White. So this was after knight e4 and then bishop takes b2, knight d6 and rook d8 as given by Mamadjarov. In the live broadcast they looked at rook f8 to protect the f pawn. But then there is queen d2, very nice move, attacking the bishop, attacking the knight. Bishop a3 is the best move according to the engine, and then rook takes b8, rook takes b8, queen takes a5, bishop takes d6, and queen takes a6, and also here white has an extra pawn and good winning chances.
In the game after knight e4, where he did not take on b2, he played bishop g5. Attacking the queen, queen d6, the queens were swapped, rook takes back, bishop e7, and rook takes a6, and now white is two pawns up. Black will get a pawn back, knight c4, rook c1, knight takes b2, rook takes check, rook takes, and a5. This is a very strong pawn, an extra pawn for white, and especially with a bishop on f3, which controls the a8 square. White also has a safe king, and he had an advantage on the clock as well. He had 46 minutes left here till the 40th move. This was move 26, while Wei Yi only had 13 minutes left for the next 14 moves. Here, Wei Yi played knight c4. In the broadcast, they were looking at a different way to try and stop the a pawn, rook c7. Then there is rook a8 check, king h7, the pawn marches on. And then if you play f5 to hit the knight, there is a7. Because if you take that piece, there is rook h8 check. And on the next move, the pawn will promote. If after a6 you don't play f5 but play knight c4, then rook b8 followed by rook b7 is a good way to win this position. I said after a5, where he did not play rook c7, he tried knight c4. Rook a7 from Mamajarov, and you can try bishop f8 here, that bishop is attacked. And then there is a nice move for white, bishop h5. And Grandmaster Eric Hansen showed a nice variation. You cannot kick that bishop with g6, because white will just take it. And if you take back, you get checkmated in two moves. Knight f6 check. King in the corner, and rook h7 is a classical checkmate. So all that after rook a7 hitting the bishop and then bishop f8, where he played bishop b4 instead. a6 from Mamajarov and f5. It looks tricky for a moment because this knight has no squares. It's trapped in the middle of the board. But Mamajarov had seen this. He worked it out. He played rook b7, counter-attacking black's piece on b4. And after f takes e4, it looks again tricky, because yes, you can take the bishop, but your own bishop is hanging on f3. But the last move of the game was bishop g4, and where he resigned, he's going to lose another pawn at the minimum. Both e6 is hanging with a check and a fork, and b4 is hanging, and there's different ways, different things black can do. He can try rook e8, protecting the e6 pawn, but then rook takes b4, wins the piece back, attacks the knight. If the knight goes to e5, there is a7, and no, you cannot take the bishop because rook b8 and white will promote. If you try something else after bishop g4, for example rook a8, to try and get that a pawn, then there is bishop takes e6 check, winning another pawn, king in the corner, you win your piece back. The knight is hanging. If you go to e5, there is rook takes e4, picking up another pawn. And if you go to d6, then there is rook b6. And white is two pawns up. And this is easy technique for a grandmaster, especially a super grandmaster like Shahriar Mamajarov, who won another game. He was already leading the tournament and he now has won four games and made three draws. And with five and a half out of seven, he is on top of the ranking. This is a picture of Mamajarov and Wei Yi before the start of the game. You see lots of photographers around and the players are concentrating on the battle that is about to begin. The results of round seven. The world champion Magnus Carlsen defeated the strongest female player on the planet, but it was a long struggle. Carlsen had to sacrifice an exchange in the end game, but in the end he won. Jones and Sweetler played a draw. Vishwanathan Anand played Vladimir Kronik for the world title in 2008 and won that match. But in this game he lost with the white pieces. Nice game from Kramnik. Wesley So and Anish Giri, two players at the top of the ranking, played a draw. 
We saw Mamajarov against Wei Yi, Matlokov and Adibam played a draw, and Fabiano Carrana, who has a bad tournament, blundered a pawn just after the opening, and Sergei Karyakin managed to win that game. These are the standings after round 7. Mamajarov on top, one point ahead of Giri, Kramnik, So and Carlsen. In the eight rounds, we'll, we will see Anis Giri with the white pieces against Shakyar Mamajarov. That will be quite a game. Karyakin won his first game after six draws, and he's now on four points together with Anand. Jones on three and a half, together with Matlakov and Svitler. Those three players on 50%. Weiyi lost his last two games and is now on two and a half out of seven. Kaurana has really got a bad event. He managed only four draws so far. Adiban got the next out draw and poor Hoyefan lost again. Six rounds to go. Round eight will be played on Sunday the 21st of January and I will be here after the round to tell you what happened. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel. Please leave a comment and if you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media. You also may want to check out my Chess 2 Progress channel. The link is in the description box of this video. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.